The following video will provide an overview of how to browse the internet on your iPad using Safari. By the end of this video, you should be able to browse the internet and navigate your way through Safari. You may want to hold your iPad while viewing the video on a computer so that you can practice using Safari as you follow along. All right, teachers, this tutorial will give you a, a brief overview of navigating the, or browsing the internet using Safari. Um, now, in Safari for iOS 7, and again, I hate to keep mentioning that, but this is a brand new update for all of us. But Safari in iOS 7 does bring about uh, a couple of changes that may throw some people off if they haven't used it before. Um, so let's, let's just jump right in here, and I'm going to kind of show you how to get around the Internet using this. Um, your Safari icon still is, is the compass um, icon, so we would just click on that. And one of the first things that you're going to notice in this new version of Safari is at the top, there's no longer two bars. There's no longer an address bar and a search bar. It has all been combined into one. And so you can actually search from the same bar and enter an address. For instance, if I go in here and type, um, I could easily type um, an address in and go to a site. And let's say I want to go through and I'm looking for review of the iPad or iPhone or whatever. Well, I also, I don't have to worry about typing an address. If I want to search, I could just go and put CNET review for iPhone. Like if I don't know the actual address for what I'm needing. I can search from the same bar, tap on it, and, and there we go. Okay, so your search bar and your address bar are one and the same now, but they're, they're, it's almost like a smart bar. It knows when you're typing in a www address, and it knows when you're searching. Another is the icon right to the left of the search bar. You've actually got two up there. Let's actually look at the one. If you look at the one in the search bar. You see that one there that looks almost like the, it almost looks like how you, you would have that icon in Microsoft Word where you would adjust whether a page is centered or left justified or right justified. If you have an article here, this is kind of like the, the reader icon, and you select on that thing that looks like a paragraph in that bar, then it gets rid of all the excess on the page and takes you directly to the content of the article you're reading. So pretty neat for reading websites. You know, if I take that off, then I've got my ads, I've got my whole layout, I've got where I can buy it, and it's a really, really cluttered web page. But if I want to focus just on my article, I hit that paragraph there and, and there you go. Look at the one to the left of it. A lot of cool features added in here. Let's say I like this review and a fellow teacher is wanting to know what, what's up with the iPhone 5 or iPhone 5S. Let's just, I think this one's about the 5, okay? So I've come up on an article that's a year old, but for, you know, an example's sake, let's go ahead and use it. Let's say I want to send this article to someone. Well, that's where the little square icon with the arrow pointing out the top of it comes in. If I tap on that, I get a whole lot of features that show up, okay, and I can scroll left to right. I can use AirDrop, which there will be a t separate tutorial for that. That's pretty neat. If you're at a teacher meeting with someone, you know, obviously, or if you're in the lounge, or if you're just in the hallway close to another teacher, um, you know, you can, you can shoot this through AirDrop and they have it instantly. But if not, then I have features, like I can send this through uh, iMessaging, I can send it through mail. I can tweet a link to this or I can put it on Facebook. Now, you'll be limited to some of those features at school, obviously, on that connection. But if you were at home and this was a really cool article that you wanted to use in the classroom or something related to research, you know, tweet it, put it on Facebook, share it, send it through an email, and, and it'll be there when you need it. But I can also bookmark it. A pretty neat, easier way to bookmark here. It's all in one little icon here. I can add it to a reading list, which just simply, let's just practice that one. I think bookmark self explanatory that's just going to save it for later i'll show you quickly though if i hit bookmark it will allow me to go with a default title or i can change it okay i can also change the location i can put it in my favorites or i can put it in my bookmarks folder whatever i would like to do if it's one that i really want to see constantly i might favorite it go in and save it and now i have a bookmark if i want to do the reading list i would do that and then i'll show you how to access that in just a second um, look over to the right side of the address bar. Okay? Do you see the little icon that looks like a book? If I hit that little icon, it looks like an open book. 
then I can now access my bookmarks. I can access my reading list there, which there is my article. And I can also access any links that, that have been shared related to this, okay? Now, that's just an added feature. So that's just links that people have shared. Kind of keeps you kind of keeps you abreast of um, things that maybe people you follow on Twitter or Facebook are putting up, okay? And I'm going quick, so if you need to re rewind that and watch it again, that's fine. So let's, let's, and I'll go in slow motion for you one more time here. I'm going to hit my little icon to the left. See it going up there with a little arrow. And I can choose either bookmark or add to reading list. I'm going to add to reading list, okay? When that's done, I go to the right side of that address bar and hit my little open book icon. And that's where I access my bookmarks or I access my reading list. Okay, and the thing about reading lists is it's going to save it, and um, it's it's just an easier way to get to bookmarks quicker. I think that's the whole point of splitting it is how quickly do we really want to access an article. You might want to put stuff in the reading list that you're going to use in class so that you don't have to spend time going through a lot of bookmarks. It's going to be there one after the other. And then things that have been shared by other people. Maybe you can see all my shares are coming from Twitter because we've got the little blue bird icon. All right, um, that's pretty much bookmarks and reading list. What if it's a site I find? What if this is a whole site that is something I'm going to use all the time, say, in my STEM class, I don't know, or my a history class, whatever it might be. That's where add to home screen comes into play, okay? If I hit add to home screen, it is going, it's going to ask me for a tie. It's pretty long for a home screen app, so I'm just going to put, C, I'm going to put CNET Reviews. I'm going to spell it right, though. I'm going to back up there. CNET Reviews. And I'm going to hit Add. This is just like adding a shortcut to your desktop. But what's cool on the iPad is it, make it makes it look like an app. This is known as a web app. So instead of going to Safari and searching through my bookmarks and my reading list, if I send it to Home, home screen, I have an app now. And it's all like a web app, but it's really just a shortcut. Does that make sense? Some of you sitting there thinking, what? Okay, let's go through that again. I'm on Safari, and I know it's a site I'm going to use all the time. Okay? So I'm going to hit my little icon on my arrow, add to home screen, and then you can change the title if you would like or not. I'm just going to hit add, and there it is. It's on my home screen. And it looks very professional. It looks just like an app. If I ever get tired of that link, don't want to use it, I just hold and delete it just like if it were an app I download from the App Store. Okay? So that's three cool features about Safari. Let's go back to our little icon up there in the top left. I have copy and print. Now print, if you're set up with an AirPlay printer or um, a wireless printer, you can print directly from the iPad. Or if I want to copy it like I'm going to copy and paste it somewhere, I can do that too. Okay, and that's what those features are. Pretty self-explanatory, but as with anything, you're only going to get really good at mastering and maneuvering your way through here by actually spending time doing so. What is this cloud icon in the top right corner? All right, a cloud. So let's hit the cloud and see what happens. I don't have any iCloud. This is related to iCloud taps. Now here's why um, this is totally optional. But I don't sync my Safari across iCloud simply because, um, you know, I may have multiple family members using my iTunes account. Well, I just don't want to clutter their phone up, okay? I'm not interested in all of the bookmarks that my son might have on his iPad from playing, you know, uh, Army D-Day or, or, or Angry Birds or something or, or stuff he searched for or multiplication. It's not a big deal. Okay, it's meant as a convenience. Like if you if you had iCloud turned on, and I might as well just show you this real quick. Okay, it won't take long, so bear with me. I go to settings, I go to iCloud. If I have that on, you see this Safari tab switch right here. Okay, if I had that on, we might as well practice it real quick. If I had that on, then when I go back into that tab on Safari. See, all of my links and things like air hogs, that's those little portable helicopters. I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess my little boy search that. But I leave that off so that um, I just don't have anything cluttered. Now, you, you can do what you, you would want. Um, 
But that's what that's for. So the cloud icon is only going to matter to you if you're using iCloud in there. The plus icon is when you want to open an additional page. Like if you look up, and it's going to be hard to show you this, but look in the top left corner right under the arrow pointing to the left, the back arrow. You'll see a little X there. All right, if I close that, that's going to shut that page down. And it's just going to take me to kind of like the, the sites that I've been to the most. Well, let's say I'm doing research here and I need multiple pages, all right? I want to read about an article, but I want to check all my sources. So I'm going to open a Fox News page, okay? If I hit the plus sign, it's going to open up another blank page for me. See now how I have a second X over here. I might go there and go to CNN because I want two sources here to verify my information. Well, all I can do there is, what I can do now is go back and forth, okay? So I'm back to my page. I'm just hitting the tab up there. Look up at the screen. Now I'm on the Fox News page. Hit the tab to the right that's gray now, and it'll turn white when it's live, and I'm on it, and there's my CNN page. So I could search for these stories, and I could see maybe what CNN's saying about um, Obamacare, and then I could go and I could look and see what Fox is saying about Obamacare. So the plus sign just adds pages. And you can open up a bunch of pages. If I keep hitting that, it's just endless. Um, and then I'll, I'll go through there. And then I would just have to close each of those individually. So just keep that in mind. That's just to kind of help you um, if you want to stay clutter-free, organized. All of that's there for you. But that's pretty much the navigation through Safari. It works a lot like a, a, a browser on a desktop computer. It's just you're touching it, and you have a little bit quicker access to some of the main features like printing, sharing, those types of things, okay? As with anything, be patient with it. It'll take some navigating. You may have to watch the video a time or two, but I think that covers almost everything you're going to need to actually be able to get on the Internet and search through um, and, and find the information that you need, okay? If you have any questions, please... Um, please just email me and uh, and let me know and I'll be I'll be glad to help you all right thanks so much